Okay, hello everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at the discriminant of a quadratic. Now, we went ahead and talked about how you solve the quadratic equation ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero. And one of the methods that you can use is the quadratic formula, which is right here. Now, notice that what I did is I actually wrote the part that is under the radical sign in blue so that we can focus on that. And the reason why we want to focus on that is because that particular part, just b squared minus 4ac, is called the discriminant of a quadratic. Okay, so notice that we symbolize it with this triangle here, and it's just going to be the b, b squared minus 4ac. So oftentimes what you'll see is you'll see the quadratic formula just written in this abbreviated form. Okay, now, before we get us to what it is used for, there's one small piece of information that I need to go ahead and inform you about. And it's this particular word here, the conjugate. Okay? The conjugate, if we go ahead and take a look at what the conjugate actually represents, these two expressions here, these two binomials, are actually conjugates of each other. And the reason why it's a conjugate of each other is because the only difference between these two is that the signs are different, one is plus and one is minus. So if I said what is the conjugate of a plus b, it would be a minus b. What is the conjugate of a minus b? It's a plus b. So that's why these two are conjugate of, conjugates of each other. Okay, and that's going to be important for us to know because when we go ahead and talk about what the discriminant is used for, we need to go ahead and know this term conjugate. And let's go ahead and see why. Now, what is it used for? When you think about the word discriminant, it actually sounds like you're trying to discriminate. And that's exactly what it does when you're trying to solve for a quadratic equation. It will very simply tell you how many roots you have or how many solutions you have and what kind of roots or solutions you have. And it's just by looking at b squared minus 4ac. Now, let's go ahead and take a look. Now, the, the value of delta can be three things. It's either going to be negative, zero, or positive. Those are the only three things that it can be. Now, if you have, say for example, let's start at the bottom here. If you have a delta being greater than zero, then that means that this part right over here is going to be a positive number. Then that means that what you're going to come up with is you're going to come up with two roots, and the roots are actually going to be conjugates of each other, and they are going to be real numbers because one is going to be negative, negative b plus the square root of the discriminant, the other divided by 2a, and the other one is going to be negative b minus the square root of the discriminant divided by 2a. So notice that they're conjugates of each other, as well as being real numbers. Now, if the, uh, the discriminant actually comes out to be an equal to zero, in other words, in this part here of your quadratic formula is zero, then the square root of zero, of course, is zero, then that means really what you have is you just have one root. But that root is actually going to be called a double root because if you actually go ahead and factor it, you come up with the same factors. So it's going to be considered a double root. It's a repeated root or a repeated solution. And so the total number of roots that you have is one. And of course, the type of root that it is, it is a real root. Now, the interesting thing happens when you actually have the discriminant being less than zero. In other words, you have the value of delta being less than zero or negative. And if we think about what happens here, you cannot have a negative value under the radical sign. And because you have a negative value under the radical sign, you really have two different ways of interpreting this. You either have zero roots, okay, zero roots, zero real roots, or you're actually going to be coming up with two roots, but both of them are going to be conjugate imaginary. Now, we haven't talked about conjugate imaginary, but imaginary numbers are based upon the fact that you have a negative value under the radical sign. Okay, so I'm just going to introduce that right now. It is either going to be zero real roots, or it is going to be two conjugate imaginary roots. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do now, given this example, and let's go ahead and determine what type of roots we have and how many just by looking at the discriminant. So notice that we say that the discriminant is equal to 1, which is b squared, right? That's b squared minus 4 times it by a, c. We come up with negative 23. That means that this is less than 0. So that means that this quadratic 
has two conjugate imaginary roots, or it has zero real roots. Now notice I put in here as well, that interpretation means that you don't have any x-intercepts. If you were to go ahead and graph this function here, and look for x-intercepts, you have none, okay? Now, the last thing that we're going to ask, uh, the last thing that I'm going to ask you is what is a positive definite? What does it mean if a quadratic is positive definite? What does it mean if a, if a quadratic is negative definite? And how do you define them? Okay, so we'll go ahead and discuss that as well during class. So notice that when we go ahead and talk about the discriminant again, just to wrap things up, we're talking about just the part that is under the radical sign in the quadratic formula. Basically what it will do is it will tell you, based upon its value, how many roots and what kind of roots you have. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at some of the questions during class. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to answer any queries you have at that time. Okay, so we'll see you then. Bye-bye.